I guess the feeling of home, you can't really describe it. It's, it's inside you, it's the pride of it, you know. We're this small little nation that um, has so much to give. Being Irish is something that I'm so proud of and I hold dearly with me every time I'm away from home. We're opening the World Cup against Australia in Sydney in front of 81,000 and a half people. What we've went through in these last few years, the girls deserve to be playing on a world stage like that. It's an absolute privilege to be able to say that I'll be, I'll be leading them out. Where do I begin? My mum, what a, an amazing woman. She's um, had 11 of us, so I've got, um, yeah, I've got a big family. I've got six sisters, four brothers. For me, it's coming from a big family, we always had each other's back. She kind of leaves me a little bit speechless, to be fair, because I don't think she knows how great she actually is and what she's given us. And even for myself, like, she supported me through my whole journey since when I was five or six, starting to kick a ball right up to where I am now. And they always gave the last stitch and everything they had um, to make sure we had a smile on our face and, um, yeah, to make sure we were happy. We'd been given free tickets to the Women's National League game. I was kind of sitting there with my ticket and just kind of saying, will you sign it, will you sign it? And then Emma had come across, Emma Brown, the goalkeeper, and she'd sign it. And it honestly, the, the feeling I had to just have that kind of moment with a player, um, I'll never really forget, and it's something I hold quite dearly. As a young kid coming from Ireland into a massive club like Arsenal when I did at 19, I saw what those girls were were given, and rightly so. They'd they'd worked their their whole careers to get their respective professional contract. Yeah, I guess I think it was maybe nine years later, eight nine years later. Then I'm, I'm teammates with, with Emma Bourne at, at Arsenal in Ireland. I always tell her that story, and she's kind of like she just pushes it off because it makes her feel old, you know. You grow up playing football and the reason why you start playing football is because you enjoy it and the freedom of it and the people you play with um, and then obviously as you get older and the more professional that comes it's difficult to then go from having that freedom having that enjoyment playing with your mates there was just so much pressure on everybody we had nothing we didn't get paid, we didn't play on great pitches, we had to give tracksuits back, we had to change in airports. Um, it was really, really uh, below par in, in terms of um, what we could access and what we, what we had in terms of being able to perform. And you go back to obviously not having that support, like we didn't, we didn't have that kind of support that young kids get to have now. And I worked in Nando's, like, yeah a month before I'd start kicking the ball for Arsenal. Like it was very, very surreal to, to go from that um, and very hard and, and like, yeah, it was just a really difficult transition, yeah, to go from Nando's worker training five nights a week, sitting on a bus, hour back, and then you're up to work for Nando's again. Like it's, and then like your job now is just to be in this best physical condition as can be. At the time where I, I just before I left for Arsenal, I'd broke into the, the senior national team after us having a really successful tournament as an under 19, underage player. So then I, I'd kind of picked up a lot of, there was a lot of media attention on that tournament um, and I'd had a, I had a good tournament and then to go from that to then straight into the senior team and getting opportunities quite early on to then, to then play and in the short space of time, when Colin came in, my safe place was Ireland. They were the people that knew me, that saw me, that saw the potential in me. Yeah, instilled me with that confidence that I could go on and, and change a game um, or score us a goal um, and yeah, win a match essentially. And I'd just been asked to be the next captain of Ireland off Emma Byrne and 
I'm thinking Emma Burns has just been playing for Arsenal and I can't even get a game at Arsenal. I was like, what are people going to think, you know, like, why would the next, like, if the next captain of Ireland can't even get a game, like, why is she, why is she the captain? Um, but the coach at the time, Colin Bell, he saw something in me that I never saw in myself in terms of being a leader. Yeah, I guess he saw him. He saw longevity in me, that um, he thought that I could, I could lead my country for the next couple of years. I've lived away from home now seven and a half years, which is absolutely crazy to, to kind of think back on it. I still remember the day I left in the airport on the flight over to, to Luton, and lo and behold, who picked me up was Emma Byrne um, from the airport. There's been such um, yeah, crazy moments with me and Emma through, through the years and in terms of even her, like when I came into the Ireland team, her having the captaincy at the time and me wanting to be like Emma. Um, and then obviously when Emma had retired, I had then been asked to be the next captain of Ireland and I kind of rang Emma being like, what do I do? I'm, I'm 21. <laughs> There was very difficult things happening at the time with the association and the women's team that was off the back of the strike, which Emma had kind of took charge of. So I was kind of dealing with the, the knock-on effects of that. When things were happening, I was like, oh, what would Emma do? Or what would she do in this situation? Or what way would she act? We were working pretty closely with the PFAI at the time. So I was like catching up on a lot as to why and what was going on. and. Um, you're hearing then the stories of what the girls had to kind of go through in terms of girls were working nine to five and had like loss of earnings because they had to take 10 days every six weeks off work to represent their country. And for over 12 hours, we were in a hotel, a hotel sort of conference room. A deal didn't get struck until about two or 3 a.m. that morning and we all had to then go home and get our bags and then actually meet for a camp and then we ended up playing Slovakia. And when you go through kind of difficult moments like that, it only brings you closer together and I don't know what it is with women's sport, I feel like we all just kind of keep an eye on each other and look out for each other because we can all sort of share our experiences and and share our stories and, and help kind of other sports grow um, through the negative sort of experiences you had. It's nice to be able to sit here and be physically healthy, be mentally in a good place, to be on the way to Australia, to, to create history really with a team I love so much and a country I'm so proud to be part of. And to kind of leave a legacy now for young girls in Ireland and young boys. We wanted better pitches, we wanted our own tracksuit. It's those little things that you shouldn't have to think about as a footballer. Now that all that kind of dust has settled in the last few years, um, we're able to focus on our job, which is, which is performing. And we're here now on the cusp of, of heading to the, our first ever World Cup. But I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm so happy to, to be in, in such a good place. I play for a fantastic club. Um, and yeah, I get to, to be heading to a World Cup in my country.